Hey, good morning everybody. Today I'm going to show you how to make almond cookies. Now, these are not the ones you would traditionally think of when you go to the restaurant because uh, they don't have food coloring or too much sugar or too much fat and they're not all dried out. So, however, if you do leave these on a counter for a week or ten days, um, you may get the texture that you're used to, but they taste just fine coming out of the oven as is. And that said, I really don't think they're going to last 7 to 10 days because it only makes 16 cookies. Uh, first thing you should do is heat up your oven to 350 Fahrenheit. I am using my stand mixer for this today. Um, you can do it by hand. It just takes longer. So the first thing to do is get your butter ready. Now, I've got unsalted butter. You get a much nicer flavor. I've left this out on the counter for a bit, so it will go a lot quicker if you just chop it into little bits with a knife before you start. Once that's all chopped up, get it in the bottom of your bowl. Measure the sugar in right away because you want this to cream together. I put in the almond extract at the beginning so I don't forget. Now, I tried a lot of different experiments with this. I came out at three quarters to give just a nice flavor. Half is not enough. If you're wondering why I've got separated in the ingredients, uh, it's because one of the egg yolks is going to be used as a glaze on top. Crack one of the eggs into the container used for the butter. Give that a smell. I always do this because you just don't want to take the chance that you've got a bad egg. I think that's cracked, so yeah, it's going back in. Well, that's coming along nice, so whip it up faster to separate it. Pop your eggs in. Whip it up briefly, just enough to mix. But not enough to melt. Now I just put the baking powder right in the flour and just mix it up briefly. And believe it or not, almond flour is becoming much more popular than it used to be because nuts are supposed to be part of your diet now. They're quite good for you. Um, it's pretty easy to get. Make sure you get a really fine grind on that. Put in the regular flour. Just a slow mix for a bit, just so that it's incorporated. You can turn it up a little bit just to grab the stuff off the sides. You can see how that's starting to hang together now. That's great. That's what you want. Now, two ways to do this. Honestly, you're going to lose a lot of batter. If you start poking around in the spatula, you can save that for the sides if you need. What you're better to do is just lift it up a bit, pull it free, and then bang it back into the bowl. At this point, you got full control and you can get the spatula if you want. You get into trouble when you start digging around while it's still attached. This has got a good consistency. It's not melted, so you'll be able to make the cookies right away. I'll just reattach your beater. Not so fast, the stuff's flying out the side but not so slow that it's going to melt. Once you're happy that you've got all the dried bits off the bottom, just do one last mix to make sure it's fully incorporated. Looking good. This is where I get the gloves. Just making sure I get all the bits off this side. 
The dough is extremely soft, but it's not melted. That's your point. Now, I actually do make these. I, I do everything right on the cookie sheet. Now, if you're wondering why there's a dark bit here and there, that's just some almond skin that got in the flour, nothing to worry about. So that's eight cookies, four each. Two. And a cookie. So roll it in a ball, press it between your palms, put a thumb in the middle to make a dent. Some recipes put an almond, I don't. The reason I do this is so the egg yolk glaze does not run off the cookie onto the cookie sheet and burn. And you notice the last bits are scratched together. I've yet to determine a good space fitting algorithm to get everything even. But they don't stick together so it doesn't matter. So just do this with your finger and the glove. Get a bit of egg and just do that. Try to keep it on the surface. Now if it does go off, huh, like that. No, I did not that, do that on purpose. It just happens sometimes. Um, it'll burn a little, but it's not going to set off the smoke alarm. Believe it or not, one egg yolk goes a really long way. So you can just kind of get the ones. Well, I think I actually did miss two. Let me take a look and see who's shiny and who's not. Give them a bit of a touch up if you need to. Good enough. So pop this in your 350 Fahrenheit oven for 20 minutes on the clock. The timer went off. So I pulled them out. Now, one thing I should say about timing with these, okay? Everybody's got a different cookie preference. Some people like these crispy, some people like them underdone. Um, and also, depending on whether you've got gas or electric, and how good the thermostat in your oven is, uh, you may get different results. So, I wouldn't use 20 minutes as absolute, you know, timing for this. Just do it for whatever works for you. That's a better look. Okay, so you can see there's just a nice golden color on these. Yeah, and I think my oven's starting to go because some of the corners are a bit browner than the others, which isn't good. Now, and as far as crispness goes, these are quite soft if you leave them on the cookie sheet. So I'm going to let them cool for a minute, then I'm going to move them to the rack so they dry underneath and get, you know, as crispy as they could. Now the reason you want to let these set for a few minutes on the sheet is if they are really soft and you get the tongs are too soon, they'll just collapse. You can always tell. I got new... Oh! Well there's a good shot of the bottom. Yeah, they're just cooked nice without being burnt. They're all cooled off now. So I figured I'd pick one and try so you can see the bottom is done there. Snap it in half. They are still quite soft, and I'll just try a bite. Mm. The bottom has got that nice crunch, and the middle has got that lovely moist cookie thing happening. But like I said, if you let them sit long enough, they will get crispy all the way through. Gee, maybe those restaurants have been giving you stale cookies, eh, all these years, and you never knew. <laughs> Anyways, I think these are really good. Give them a shot. Thanks for watching, and subscribe. See you again.